Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of Identity in 15, powered by WSO2 Identity Server. Hope you all are having great 2021. <clears throat> so our topic for today is demystifying the toggle configuration model. So basically what we are going to do is we are going to see how you can customize your WSO2 Identity Server setup according to your preferences using just one file. So about myself, my name is Ashwin De Silva, and I'm a software engineer at WSO2. So without much further ado, let's get started. So let's say that you have downloaded a fresh identity server pack and you need to link it to your own user store or database. And maybe you need to enable some extra features as well. For identity server setup to suit your own requirement, uh, to, uh, to suit your preferences. So how would you do this? This is where the configuration model comes into play. So what is this configuration model? It is a list of files that holds the configurable and customizable uh, properties of the identity server. Uh, <clears throat> it basically enables you to customize your setup without having to make any code level changes to the product. So before we dive into the Tomal configurations, let's have a look at the old way, how things used to be done. Uh, as some of you already may know, uh, each component of the identity server has its own uh, XML configuration file. As you can see here, or if you can just uh, show you here, you can see the carbon XML configuration file, which holds all the server instance related configs. And then there's the identity XML file, which holds the IAM business logic related configs and so on and so forth. So, so back in the day, uh, these XML files had to be modified individually. So you would have to know which component that you're trying to change, track that XML file, uh, search for the config and to change that value. So this could be uh, somewhat, some kind of, somewhat of a hassle as you would have to know which component you're trying to change, then find the XML file, find the config, and then uh, change the value. And you would have to tra keep track of the changes that you've made. And if you've made an error, then you would have to repeat the same process over again. So uh, yeah, so, th so this could be very time consuming. So with our new method, all of these issues have been addressed. Also, on a side note, uh, the old method has been deprecated as of identity server version 5.9.0. So this means that uh, manually changing the XML files no longer works and as it would just get defaulted back to its original. So the new way, the Tomal configurations is the new way. So with this, uh, the configuration model has been centralized to just one single file and all the configuration changes will be taken care of by that. So this file is called the deployment toml file and it can be found in this directory uh, mentioned here where uh, most of all the other XML configuration files. So this means that you can add all the configuration changes sequentially in the deployment toml file and then once you start the server, all those changes will be automatically applied to the relevant uh, XML configuration file. So um, this is the default deployment toml file, as you can see, uh, all these <clears throat> configuration changes have been included in this single file. And these are configurations of different, different components all in just the same file. So let's talk a bit about what Toml is. Toml is a file format for configuration files, and it stands for Tom's Obvious Minimal Language, as it has been named after its founder, Tom Werner. Um, it is uh, a very important thing. A very important thing to note about Toml is that it is case sensitive. 
So please make sure that when you're in, uh, entering the configuration changes that it is of the correct case as what's mentioned in the documentation or else it won't work properly. Um, Toggle supports only the UTF-8 characters and it also allows escape characters as well in case you wanted to add any special characters. And the main data types that are used are string, integer, and Boolean. And also, if you see here, you can see that the array data type is also somewhat common as well in our configurations. Okay, here you can see uh, a basic toggle file. Uh, let's see what uh, the components of the toggle file are. Uh, starting off, you can see the word owner enclosed uh, within square brackets. So this would mean that it's a table header and this section here will be called a table. So uh, everything under the table header, uh, all these properties, the key value pairs belongs uh, to the table header until you come across another uh, table header, which is another word enclosed within square brackets. So just for the sole purpose of understanding the toggle format, we can compare it with its equivalent JSON format. Uh, as I'm sure most of you uh, are familiar with the JSON notation. So uh, first off, you can see uh, under the table, uh, owner table header, uh, there are uh, key value pairs for name and age. And its uh, equivalent notation would be there's an, uh, a JSON object with the key owner and within it are the properties name and age like this. So the next one is database and it, over in the uh, JSON notation, you can see the similar fashion. And in addition to that, you can see another uh, property called config. And this comes from this next config in the toggle file you can see here, which is mentioned as database.config. So uh, when it's mentioned like this, uh, uh, the, the characters preceding the period becomes its uh, the, parent, uh, the parent header. So this means that the config object will be uh, a sub property of this database object. Uh, so that's what has happened here. So in the next one, you can see uh, something somewhat different. And uh, that is the products uh, table header has been included between uh, two square brackets. So when there are two square brackets, that means it's indicating an array. And if you uh, check over in the JSON notation, you can see products and there's an array. And uh, within the array, you can see uh, some JSON objects, uh, which is a direct mapping of the elements, uh, the, uh, the properties given here. Okay. So moving on to the architecture of the configuration model, uh, you can see a series of steps that the toggle files, uh, the configuration files undergo uh, before finally outputting the configuration files. And in this video, I will not be diving deep into the architecture, but I will be giving a brief description of what happens. So basically what happens is uh, the TOML file and several other files uh, shown here on the right side get read. And then uh, so certain J2 template files get looped over and then get cross-referenced with the TOML file to check whether any uh, any configuration given in the TOML file could be applied to that particular J2 file. So if, if that is possible, then the value given in the TOML file is applied to a J2 file, and then uh, the configuration file is produced. So if that is not the case, then the default value for that configuration is obtained from the default JSON file, and then uh, it would produce uh, the configuration file again. Uh, so in a nutshell, what happens is, uh, this is a TOML file and there's a J2 file and the finally the output file. So in here, uh, there's a table for owner and in the J2 file, you can see uh, there's a placeholder for owner.name and owner.age. So it would take the, uh, the key value pairs from the uh, owner table and map that to the output uh, similar configuration as Tom and 27 accordingly. So uh, next you can see an array for products and over here in the final, uh, the output, you can see uh, two entities for products list with the values given here. So let me demonstrate what I just did, what I just explained. So 
So over here, I have the identity XML J2 file open. Um, so let's uh, search for a config that we would like to change. Uh, yeah, let's try enable tenant qualified URLs. So first off, let's see uh, what it looks like in the original XML file, XML configuration. So uh, the con yeah. Uh, so the configuration file that's related to the, this J2 is the identity XML, which is uh, sort of a given. And if you search for that here, yeah. So uh, this config is there and you can see the value as false. So this val false value is the default value, which has been obtained from this default JSON file. So to search for this JSON file, let's, um, head over to the template and let's copy this. Yeah, let's search for that in our default JSON file. Yeah, so that entry is there. And as you can see, its default value is given as false. Yeah, so that's how this uh, value here becomes false. So let's try to change this. Uh, so let's open our deployment toml file and let's add the config. So uh, when we add the config, uh, yeah, this part becomes, you could either refer the J2 or then it will, uh, the better practice would be to always refer the documentation as it will be much easier and it will be guided easily. So this part becomes the table header and uh, include that within square brackets. And then, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, this is the property key you can add the value as true. Uh, here, you don't need to include any double quotes, punctuation marks, as Boolean types are also loved in uh, Toml files. So let's save this and res uh, let's start the server. Uh, let's head over back to the identity XML and see what has happened. Yeah, as you can see here, uh, the value has been changed to true. So that's how easy it is to work with uh, the toggle configurations. It's pretty much straightforward like that. Uh, yeah, so let's get back to the presentation. Okay, so now we are gonna uh, reverse engineer the J2 templates in order to find the toml key. Uh, so this would be useful if you are too, la too lazy to read the documentation. You can just uh, check the J2 file and read the uh, templates and just uh, find out, uh, figure out how to add the toml configurations. So the first example given here is pretty much uh, what I demonstrated earlier. Uh, you can see the table header super admin with its uh, entry uh, property username. And it has been uh, given uh, here simply as with the uh, super admin table header and the property username is equal to admin. So yeah, it's similar to what I just demonstrated. Uh, over here in the second example, it's a little bit more complex. As you can see, uh, uh, the table header is a little bit longer which means that so when this happens when there are multiple periods uh, everything preceding the last period is considered as a table header and every uh, what comes after the last period is uh, taken as the key or the property so that's what has, uh, has happened here monitoring.jmx is a table header and rmi registry port and rmi server port have been mentioned as properties or keys so the next example is uh, related to arrays. So if you come across a for loop, that means we are working with uh, arrays or lists. So in this first case, uh, you can see that it's iterating over tenant context rewrite web apps. And in that object, the object has been di uh, directly included here in this uh, template, templated entry. Uh, and it has no any sub properties or anything of that sort. So in such a case, uh, 
uh, <clears throat> we can take uh, everything preceding the last period as the table header. And then for the web webs property, we can add all the values that we want as a simple array like this given here. So in the case that uh, the list item has sub properties also, uh, things get a little bit different. So in the, uh, as you can see here in this for loop, uh, every listener has a sub property such as ID, type, name, order, etc. So in this case, we come back to our double square bracket notation. Uh, so for every event listener, we uh, use the event listener table header enclosed within double square brackets. And then we add each sub property uh, in that, uh, for that relevant table with the values given here. Okay. Um, the next one is, uh, so now we're dealing with key value pairs. So in this case, if you come across a for loop, uh, which has uh, items at the end, which is, uh, as you can see, this a bolded text, uh, items and parentheses. So if this is given, that means it's uh, working with key value pairs. So in this case, uh, the entire uh, text preceding items is used as the table header. And then our key value pairs are added uh, after that. So in this case, what would happen here is this, uh, uh, in the final configuration file, this key placeholder will be replaced by priority. And then the valid placeholder will be replaced by uh, the valid 90. So uh, that's a bit about how to reverse engineer our J2 templates. Um, uh, so that's it. That's a briefing of the Tomal configuration model. And now it's time to answer some questions. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, there's one question. Is there a documentation page where we can find every single property we can set in the deployment Tomal? Um, uh, there's no single document that contains all the properties. Uh, you would have to first uh, figure out what you're trying to add, the use case, and then find the uh, documentation related to that. And then that document will, uh, would give you the relevant configurations that you want. Um, uh, there's another question. I need the full list of all properties that can be set up in the Tomal file. So it's pretty uh, uh, similar to the previous question. Uh, so if you have any other questions, feel free to join our Slack channel and we'll be sharing the link down in the description below. Um, so that's it. Let's meet again with another episode like this. Till then, try this out and let us know your feedback down below uh, in the section. So see you next time.